Day three now. Here we go. Binary numbers, which when decoded properly can tell you useful things about the conditions. Okay, so we're trying to go through the sequence of numbers and generate uh, a gamma rate and, a, and an epsilon rate. And here's what we have to do. We have to go through column by column and find the most frequently used digit, a zero or one. So here there are seven ones. So that's the most frequent digit in that column. So here, considering only the first bit, there are five zero bits and seven one bits. Since the most common bit is one, the first bit of the gamma rate is one. So same thing, you go through here. The most common number here is zero, so the second bit of gamma rate is zero. Same thing for the others, and you end up with 10110 in binary, which if you convert to decimal, the bits are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 16 plus 1, 2, 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. Uh, so that's how to produce the gamma rate, and then the epsilon rate is similar. It just takes sort of like the inverse of this number or swapping it. Imagine a number where wherever you see a 1, there's a 0 instead. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's the number we start with to compute the epsilon rate. Let's look at my solution now in Python. We're using path to read the data here. So path with this argument, followed by a call to the read text method, reads the text, strips off any final new line, and then splits a new line. So we end up with a list of numbers. You know, maybe I should add a type hint here so we can see that that's a list of strings. So it's a list of numbers, but the numbers are in strings. So technically it's a list of string. And then we need to know how many columns there are. In the test data, these 12 numbers, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five columns. But in the, the real data, there are many more columns. So the program first has to know how many columns there are so it can do work that's uh, coming up. So these two lines get executed. Then we have three functions here. And then we call here part one. And um, I think I'm going to show you this by running it in the debugger and just let you see what's going on. Um, so let's put a breakpoint right here. Control D to start, or you can click on the little bug icon. Now the program's running, and we're about to compute the digits here. 10110. So we've just computed the 10110. That is this. So we've computed the uh, a string of these ones and zeros that uh, in binary is the 22. So we've got the gamma rate here at this point. Um, but as a string with binary digits in it. So 10110, you remember um, converting to binary, these um, these columns are the 1's column, 2, 4, 8, 16's column. So 16 plus 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. So when I run this next line to turn those this string with digits in binary into a decimal integer, here's the 22. So we figured out the gamma rate. Well, how did we produce this string with all the digits in it? Well. I think we'll run again, and this time we'll put a breakpoint in here as well. So let's run again. And now we find ourselves in most digits. So what are we doing here? Nums is this sequence of strings with these numbers in them. Pause, right now pause has a value of zero. So the job is to go through and count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're counting the number of ones. 
So for every number in the numbers, we're getting the character for the column we're currently working on, which is indicated by pause, right now the zero column or the first column. So we're going through all these first columns and turning that into an integer and then summing them up. So zero plus one is one, plus one is two, three, four, four plus zero is four, four plus zero is four, four plus one is five, six, seven, seven plus zero, seven plus zero. So that's how we get the, the seven. So let me advance. Bit counts should now equal seven. So that's coming from here. And now we want to find out whether, whether there are more ones than zeros or more zeros than ones. So if we say bit counts and we see if that's greater than half of the numbers here, if the number seven is greater than half of the numbers, we have 12 numbers, so six would be halfway. As long as you have greater than six, then we're gonna return a one because one is the most common digit. So hopefully you're seeing that this most digits function returns either a one or a zero, depending on whether there are more ones or zeros in the column you're currently looking at. Which column are we currently looking at? Pause. When we get called again, pause is now will then be a one. So this is gonna increase. Let's um, continue running. And now we're back here, this time pause equals one. So now we're gonna go through and find which is more common. We're gonna find out how many ones there are in this next column. And there are five. One, two, three, four, five. So now, is it true that there are more ones than zeros? No. So this is gonna return a zero because zero is the most common number in the second column. So we are returning and now we're back in here and I'm going to take off this breakpoint and get us back to here. And now we're going to continue sort of where we left off before. We've got the gamma rate. That's 22. Now we have to do the other one. So the epsilon rate, calculated in a similar way, except you use the kind of opposite of this. So 10110, we're going to need to produce 01001. So let's look at that. How do we make that thing? How do we make those flipped digits? Well, we do it with this. Uh, there's a generator expression here that'll, that will give you zeros or ones for each digit in digits, and it'll swap them. So for each digit in digits, let's just consider here, um, well, the 10110. So a one will turn into a zero, and a zero will turn into a one, and so on. And that's what this does. If the digit is a one, then we're gonna replace it with a zero. Otherwise, the digit is a zero, and we replace it with a one. So we're swapping the zeros and ones. And now, and then we join them together, and now we have a string with flipped digits. So you can see down here, it's kind of small, I know, but the 10110, and the kind of opposite of that, 01001. And now that we have the epsilon rate in binary, we can convert it to decimal with this. And now we have the epsilon rate, which is nine. And the problem says that we're supposed to multiply the gamma rate and the epsilon rate, and that returns um, this value of 198 with the test data. So the final thing to do is run it with the the full data set, which is here. And now when we run, we get a much bigger number, this three number that starts with a three here. So I go to the problem and I paste this in as my answer. And so I've got the first half of the puzzle. Okay, just uh, time for the summary and any interesting bits here. We've seen path before, um, sum and a generator expression, this uh, if expression here. So here, uh, you may not have seen this before, we're doing an if and an else, but they're all in one line. And this if expression actually 
yields something or evaluates to something, either one or zero, depending on this condition here. Um, okay, I think we'll leave it there. See you next time.